Hello and welcome to the next instalment of Law & Order, the video series where I look at and unpack stories from games. In this one we'll be looking at the story from Wild Sphere's newest body horror escape room type game called Oxide Room 104. Although very good in terms of the puzzles and finding ways to survive and uncover the story, the controls in this one were pretty clunky and the voice acting was, well, this. Electric socket. Cotton towels. They look a little dirty. Despite this, the game was actually better than I expected and I had fun playing through it. This game does have multiple endings, but the plot explanation will be a basic version and will follow the best or the good ending, and then as usual we'll dive deeper into certain aspects of the story afterwards. And FYI, this story was very confusing. There was a basis for it, but certain details which were crucial to unravelling certain things were just left unexplained. This was mainly due to there being quite a few plot holes as you'll see. This game has just released, so naturally there will be spoilers, so you have been warned. Without further ado, let's jump in. A man called Matt is driving in the rain towards a motel called the Night Soul Motel in order to finalise a deal of some sort. He spots a man in an orange jumpsuit and after he turns around near the entrance and the man hits him knocking him out. The next thing Matt experiences is that he's coming to, naked in a bathtub in the motel with no memory as to how he got there. Classic amnesia trope. Anyway, Matt gets out of the bath, finds his clothes and exits the bathroom. Picking up a flashlight, he exits the motel room. He sees a woman standing there who points at something. She is warning Matt of imminent danger. Some sort of monster, warped, grotesque and disfigured, is moving towards him and Matt is forced to retreat to a nearby storeroom. In the storeroom, he finds a map of the motel and some supplies, and more importantly, a gun. Matt needs to work out how to escape and get to the motel's third floor, where he can hopefully leave through the front door, or the common area. It's not that simple though, as Matt has to use his wits in order to make his way to the top floor by entering the rooms and finding keys. It's clear to Matt that he has been kidnapped and trapped in the motel by someone. This someone has set up numerous booby traps designed to kill or seriously harm Matt should he act illogically. Matt keeps seeing sightings of the mysterious woman from before, but he eventually manages to make it to the third floor and into the motel's reception area. The way is blocked off though, and he sees the mysterious woman walk through the restaurant area, and after following the path round, Matt is chased by the grotesque creature from before. Nonetheless, he gets away with it and leaves out of the front door. It's not over yet though, as the environment seems to change and Matt falls into a large hole and passes out. He wakes up again in a bathtub, hearing the voice of another man talking about someone called Eva frying his brain. He then mentions that it appears someone has taken a walk through his laboratory and he leaves. Matt wakes up and is somewhere that seems to be underground. Whatever this place is, it's very secretive. Matt sees and hears a woman in there too, covered by a sheet and she's crying. Matt leaves and is chased by the man he heard before, but Matt manages to seal himself inside an elevator. He takes the elevator up and manages to escape the hotel finally earning his freedom. The game then ends. So that's the most basic form of the plot, and now we get into discussing exactly why Matt is there and what on earth is going on in this motel. Okay, so the name of the game is Oxide Room 104. A strange name, considering the motel isn't called Oxide, it's called the Night Soul Motel. There are lots of notes in this game which give a bit of backstory into what is going on at this motel. During the game, if Matt dies in the motel, he finds himself transported to a bathtub, being treated pretty roughly by the scarred man in the orange jumpsuit. Even after having limbs sawn off, he then somehow ends up back in room 104 again, bandaged up. But how is this possible? The man in the orange jumpsuit is a deranged scientist, we'll call him Doc, who was obsessed with immortality and the science behind prolonging his own life for as long as possible. More importantly, combining complex organisms, humans, with biotechnology. Taking heavy inspiration from Resident Evil's Oswell E. Spencer, who basically wanted the same thing, this mad scientist wanted humanity to enter into a new revolution. After he'd been working on this development for around 40 years, he started what he'd come to call Oxide. Over these 40 years, he'd made modifications to his own body in the hope that, as I said earlier, who would prolong his life. This included modifying his lungs, kidneys and his urethra. However, he only saw this as the beginning. In comes Eva. 
Eva is a name that pops up throughout the game a fair few times. Essentially, Eva was Doc's next step. He refers to her as his main processor, and by main processor, he means that he has hooked Eva up to some sort of contraption which taps into a very specific and unique ability of Eva's. You see, according to Doc's notes, Doc found out that Eva had a unique ability to be able to create a metaverse inside which she can lose herself for hours. In order to observe and study Eva, Doc would have people kidnapped or lured to the motel to serve as unwilling test subjects. These test subjects would be sedated and chained to a bathtub, whilst Eva took them into this metaverse with her. These subjects would then express their thoughts and memories via documents which, when collected, and when the subject is brought back from the metaverse, would be extracted by Doc. But when I say brought back, I mean either dying or leaving through the motel's entrance. But how did Doc get a hold of Eva? Well, it wasn't simple. Doc spent years looking for a suitable processor for Oxide, but he eventually found out about Eva's abilities. Doc saw her as the answer to evolution. Extracting Eva, though, was fairly easy for Doc, as Eva was sacrificed for this project by her very own grandmother, who I'm presuming was interested in the research to further her own existence. She was funding this project too, so this is very likely. So now we move on to the test subjects. There were many, and Doc had an accomplice who was a man named Josh. Josh would bring young women to the motel. These young women were prostitutes, and Doc assumed that they wouldn't have any family members who cared about them, and that they wouldn't notice them going missing. But Josh, well, Josh got careless. He slipped up. He brought a prostitute to the motel. The only thing is, this prostitute was an undercover police officer who was investigating the disappearance of one girl in particular. Although Doc naturally thought that she might be investigating Oxide. Well, it didn't go well for Josh or the police officer. It's clear from this note that Josh didn't know much about the project or the organization. He tries to hook the police officer up and send her into Eva's metaverse to find out what she knows, but for some reason, Eva rejected the police officer, so Doc resorted to let's just say more brutal techniques, and then he connected Josh. Okay, so we should talk about our protagonist, Matt. We previously mentioned Josh. Well, Josh and Matt were business partners. Matt describes himself in notes as a man who does many jobs all over Europe. He was successful in his work, where he worked with currencies and cryptocurrencies, assets and NFTs, and he also did work as a programmer. Matt and Josh hadn't known each other for very long, and in this note, Matt says that he doesn't like Josh very much, but that he makes a lot of money. Now, we know what Josh does for a living, but Matt didn't really know the details. He didn't ask questions, but remained cautious. But Matt was involved himself. You see, Josh would take the subjects to the motel and would film them. Not sure what for, but I can probably guess. Then these subjects would be taken by Doc, and these videos would then be distributed and sold by Matt. Matt makes mention in his notes about a kidnapped girl. Matt then seems to unravel in his notes, conveying guilt and that he was just the middleman. At some point in time, Josh told Matt about the motel, with Matt thinking that a closed down motel deep in the mountains was actually a perfect place for Josh to make his videos. So Matt and Josh stayed there for their work. But this case of the missing girl weighed on Matt heavily. He began speculating on what Josh was doing and what Josh had dragged him into. Matt begins to reveal that he was actually a crook himself, conning people out of their money, and assumed that the torment of this missing girl was him paying the debt of the money he'd stolen from people. It goes further when Matt reveals that he was selling these videos on the black market, so God knows what was on them. But Matt then realised that Josh had only used him as a pawn. The job goes wrong, as seen from Josh's message at the start, and he tells Matt to get his stuff from the motel. But then immediately after he's thrown his phone away, he receives a message from Josh saying, don't go back to the motel. Matt then arrives at the motel and is being watched by Doc, eventually being knocked out by him. Next thing Matt experiences, waking up in the bathtub in room 104, leading us into the events of the game. Now during one of the game's four endings, a conversation is heard between Doc and Eva's grandmother, which mentions Eva having two sides. We'll get further into these two sides, but let's have a little look at who Eva is. As discussed, Eva was the granddaughter of a mysterious woman who sacrificed her granddaughter for Doc's research. From Eva's notes left around the motel, we see that Eva was sent to the motel by her grandmother, but she states that she doesn't know the reason why. After being there for several months, Eva discovers that the motel's blueprints weren't exactly accurate. On the blueprints, there were 34 rooms, but Eva mentions that there are 37 in the actual hotel. 
One day, Eva saw the head of construction for the renovations for the motel hiding and looking at a map which displayed the building having a completely different structure than the motel actually had. Eva spent a fair bit of time exploring the motel and covering its mysteries. Finding a way from the second floor to the third floor via a ladder, she entered into room 303. One morning, whilst exploring, Eva had a load of boxes fall on top of her. Someone helped her and Eva described the man as wearing an orange jumpsuit. It was Doc. Now this is where things take a creepy turn. One of the construction workers drowned in the pool, with other staff saying that they heard screaming. Eva mentions that she feels that someone has been watching her ever since Doc helped her. She mentions hearing voices and mentions that bad things keep happening around the motel. She begins to question why her grandmother sent her there in the first place. Just like that, everyone leaves the motel, and Eva is all alone in the motel, being left with the feeling that she is being watched. She finds out who is watching her. Doc. It's at this point that Eva is likely kidnapped by Doc, and it's likely around this time that Eva enters into her metaverse, an alternate version of the motel. A more nightmarish version, if you will. Eva starts to panic and wonders why she can't leave her metaverse. She is trapped in there. She mentions being in pain and feeling like she's being ripped open, and this is where Eva's two sides come in. She begins to develop a dark, cruel side, an evil side. Eva has always liked to write and vows to carry on through the darkness she is facing, and writing is the only thing that really gives her light. She uses her last bit of goodness to write to anyone that may enter into Oxide, telling them to leave and run. Eva's evil side then takes over. From the notes left in the game by someone only described as evil, these notes describe pain, anger, and a desire for revenge against Doc. This evil is Eva's other side, or at least I believe so. This note here describes Eva's dark side taking over the facilities, mentioning that every wall, every window, is a part of them. This is confirmed when Doc, upon speaking to what he thinks is a dead man in the bathtub, hears an alarm and discovers that someone has escaped and is walking through his laboratory. Finally, we see that outside Matt's room in 104, he sees Eva, who points to warn him of the creature. And this creature is likely evil, the other side of Eva, and a manifestation of her anger and pain. So if Matt dies inside Eva's metaverse and returns to the bathtub, Doc seems to take one of Matt's limbs. At first I was thinking, but why? But then he says that if all the variables are the same, then it will likely lead to the same outcome, which basically means that Matt will just end up dying in the same way. Waste of a test subject, so to speak. So Doc would take a limb and he would therefore alter the metaverse, which is why when Matt returns, items have moved and more enemies appear. What's more is that the environment looks rustier and dirtier, much like it would in Silent Hill's other world. This torture also served a double purpose though, as well as studying and observing Eva, Doc could also try and find out from Matt what the police officer was investigating. Of course, Matt had absolutely no idea. Now, I don't normally do this in my videos, but after collecting every single document in the game, I feel that due to the limited information that the game actually gave you, there are a few burning questions left over in my mind. Now, I did reach out to the developer for more information on the story, but I didn't get a response, so I just cracked on with this video. Overall, it was a pretty entertaining game, but for someone like me who loves to get immersed into the story, it left me feeling slightly confused. Nonetheless, I'd recommend if you're a fan of cheesy voice acting and escape room horror. Feel free to speculate in the comments, but the questions I had were as follows. Why did Matt have blood on his shirt in the intro sequence? Was this the result of an altercation? If it's Eva's metaverse, why wasn't she able to just leave? How was she trapped in there? Was she induced in some sort of coma by Doc's machine? How was Doc connecting people to Eva's metaverse from a rusty old bathtub with no wires attached? Was it like STEM in The Evil Within? And why did Eva reject the police officer? What happened to Josh after he was connected to Eva's metaverse? Is this him in the body bag? If he's in the metaverse, or worse, dead, then how did he send Matt this message? Did Doc let him go, or is he dead? This is one of the things that wasn't really explained. This game was actually harder for me to work out than Blair Witch was, and we all know how much of a mind scramble that that one was. I wish I could have made a more comprehensive video on this game and its story, but I gathered what I could. But that's it for this video. If you did enjoy this one, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this game, but for now, take care and I'll see you in the next one.